Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another video here on the channel. It's been a while since we've done one of these, but this is a book recommending video. Now, here where I live, the moment it gets over about 28 degrees, I don't want to read anything. The only activity I am interested in doing is lying on the floor in a dark room with a fan pointed directly at me. It's why I'm filming this at 8.01 a.m. because it's gonna be just too hot to do it any other time. And right after doing this, I'm gonna go to that dark room, I'm gonna point that fan at me, and I'm going to relax. But if you did want to do some reading this summer, I have had a look through my shelves, I have had a ponder, and I have come up with a list of books that I think would be good summer reads. The issue being, as a sci-fi fantasy reader, a lot of the time the books I read aren't tied to seasons. The books I tend to gravitate towards are foresty, woodsy, spooky books, which do really lean more into a winter, autumn kind of seasonal period. However, I've had a ponder. Some of these might be a bit tenuous. Maybe I just wanted to talk to you about some books that I like. We're framing it as summer reads. Let's go. Kicking it off with an author that I think is well worth picking up. Her books say adventure to me. Adventure says summer to me. That's kind of the vibe we're going for. Shannon Chakraborty. Her most recent book is called The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, and it is a seafaring one last job adventure featuring a older female pirate kind of pirate uh, and getting the crew back together to do a last job in order to obviously leave all of this behind. It is fantastically written. It is so funny. It would make a fantastic holiday book, particularly if you're doing any kind of seafaring holiday. I just think it would be great. I read this when it came out and I had an absolutely fantastic time. I would highly recommend. If you liked that and you wanted to read more or you just wanted another adventure book that would slightly stomp on your emotions, a bit more. Her other series, The Dave of Bad Trilogy, is absolutely fantastic. Start with book one, City of Brass. It is fantastic. It is set in both a fantasy world and also late 18th century or early 18th century Cairo. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is a fantastic adventure story, fish out of water. There's politics, there's court intrigue, there's romance, there's magic. There's all of the above. It is so much fun and I recommend them all the time and I desperately need to do a reread and if I were mood reading this summer I would be rereading them. That's two things. Two things that are one author so I thought I would combine them. You think sun, you think sound, you think mummies. No? Just me? Okay. The third book in the Greta Helsing series is called Grave Importance and it features Greta, who is here on the cover, our doctor to the undead, going on a sort of secondment work vacation to go to a mummy what's the word not sanatorium a health spa for mummies that's the one sanatorium very different very different energy uh, these books are absolutely fantastic you do need to read book one and two to get to the third one but they're so good why wouldn't you they are adventure mystery fantasy stories that have this wonderful identity to them. I love Greta Helsing. I love the idea of medicine for the undead. I think it's so fantastic. And this book blew me away. It was such a good time. I definitely recommend them. It's summertime, the sun is shining, we're overheating. And I don't know about you, but I tend to feel the dual emotion of how nice it is that I am warm. Uh, and also, oh no, the planet is dying. And it can get a little bit hopeless. And at that point in time, I like to reach for a little bit of solar punk. And in this instance, I would recommend Becky Chambers' Monk and Robot series. These are, as I say, solar punk, hopeful books about exploring purpose and identity set in a future world where humanity made good choices. Uh, not the best choices, not wonderful ones, but basically all the robots up and left one day and humanity was left on its own and kind of figured a lot of it out. There's a lot of solar power, there's a lot of responsible eco choices in this series, and I really like imagining a world where maybe things aren't terrible all the time and there is space to explore your identity. I just, I think that's nice. I do also recommend book two, A Prayer for the Crown Shy, but I think this is my favourite of the series. So fantastic. Just a little novella. Give yourself a treat this summer. Books with travel in can be nice to read if, like me, you're not getting away this summer. I recommend A Restless Truth by Freya Mask. Again, this is a sequel, but book one is so good, I don't mind recommending you the sequel. This is Lesbian Knives Out on a Boat 
that's all I'm gonna say. This is a another kind of murder mystery story with magic on a boat. It's sapphic. It's lovely. Um, I'm really excited for the third book. They've just released the cover and it looks so good. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I think I have a review video up for it, but if not, I'll edit this chunk out. I think this has those cozy fantasy elements while having quite high stakes, and it's a little bit spicy as well, just for you. Cozy fantasy with slightly less spice and slightly lower stakes. I've talked about this book all the time. I recommend it constantly. The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. This is what I hold up as my favorite cozy fantasy book. I love TJ Klune. I love Travis Baldry, but this, this is my favorite and it doesn't get nearly enough hype. It is a fantastic, witchy, cozy, comfy, found family story that just Oh, profoundly wonderful, uh, where we have a witch character who is brought in to take care of three young witches in a world where witches are not supposed to live together, uh, and creating that found family element, and it's Oh, it's just wonderful. I'm rereading it again in maybe two weeks and I'm, I'm really excited. Leaning a bit more fantasy, I thought I would throw in a fairy tale retelling because why not? My absolute favourite book from three years ago, two years ago, was Bryony and Roses by T. Kingfisher. I love everything T. Kingfisher has written, but this, this hits different. It's so good. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, a lot of gardening involved in this. It's got that romance element to it. I think it is a perfect summer read. I don't know that it's particularly summery technically, but to me, the time I would want to read this is in the summer. The next thing I thought about when I was trying to compile a list was books set in places that either I have been or that I want to go or that I want to go back to. In this instance, I've been thinking about an old family holiday we had to America many, many years ago. And so I want to recommend The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. This is a fantastic book set in New York, all about New York. Uh, and what I like about it is it's from a New Yorker's perspective. So it's not just touristy. In fact, it's fairly anti-tourist, to be honest. I really enjoy this story. It's got a little bit of eldritch horror if you're into that for your summer reading. And the sequel is utterly fantastic as well. I highly recommend this book so, so good. If you haven't read any N.K. Jemisin before, this is a great place to start, and then you're set up for spending the rest of the summer reading everything she's ever written. Little disclaimer before I promote this one, I do have a friend who has written a story for this anthology. I'm not being paid to promote it, but I do want to shout it out because I know that the story in there is really good. Once Upon a Summer is an indie anthology inspired by fairy tales and folklore, and they produced Once Upon a Winter last year. This is the next edition, and I haven't read it yet. I have read one of the stories. It it is on my list for two weeks from now, but it feels really silly to be making a summer reads video and not promoting Once Upon a Summer. You should probably pick this up. If, like me, you get very bogged down in reading in the summer because it's just too hot to move, short stories is a great way to still progress some things without picking up an incredibly weighty tome or an eight book dark fantasy series. I will have a video out on this at some point, probably a few weeks after you're watching this video. And the last thing, the tenth thing on my list, is that there is one series you should be planning to reread this summer. I am planning to reread it. I am hoping to get a really good, solid, detailed, note-taking reread in of the Rook and Rose trilogy, because book three is coming out in August, and we need to be ready, fans of Rook and Rose. We need to be emotionally prepared. We need to be physically prepared to lift those pages. If you've not got your Rook and Rose reread planned in, plan it in right now. Take a moment, pause the video, go plan when you're gonna read it and get back to me. <laughs> this is just a wonderful series that I have been loving for the last three to four years. And I'm so excited to read book three that I might cry. I will probably cry uh, and I am desperate to do a reread. And I think that's uh, one thing that can be a really useful use of the fact that we have a bit more time in summer often is to get into those big series that maybe you don't normally have time to get the rereads in. But I'm doing Rook and Rose. Like I say, my reading is not, nor has it really ever been seasonal. Because of how my schedule works and because of how I like to read, I don't tend to set seasonal TBRs. I don't seek out summary books. But sitting and making this list, I realised that there are things that I associate with summer that definitely feed into the books that I read, even if the books aren't called a big fantasy summertime with witches and goblins. Do you have books that you like to pick up in particular seasons, especially summer? If you've got recommendations, let me know. I would love to hear from you. Give me a feel for whether you are a seasonal reader, whether you're a work your way through a list kind of reader. I would love to know. 
while you're down there commenting all of those wonderful things. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I would like to say an enormous thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and return get early access to videos, bonus content like TBRs, live streams and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's linked below as well. Thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. Strange series is called Great. The third book. Look, I said some of these would be tenuous. I do also recommend book two, A Psalm for the Wild Built. I think that's great as well. Um, I do also recommend book two, A Cr Prayer for the. In, 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 blah, blah, blah.